Welcome to the CBIA BizCast. I'm your host, Ali Warshavsky, and today on our podcast, we're speaking with Melanie Hoban. Melanie is the Director of Workforce Development at Goodwin University, and workforce development is one of the hottest topics right now. CBIA is working with lawmakers to try to figure out the best way to combat the labor shortage, but Melanie, this is something you've had experience with for years before COVID elevated this crisis. We're so excited to have you on to discuss this. Welcome. I am so happy to be here, Allie. Thank you so much. Now, Melanie, with this position at Goodwin, you work with over 100 manufacturing companies. What are they experiencing right now? You know, it's interesting because initially I would have said training, right? We want They want to upskill their, their incumbent workforce, which we'll talk about. Um, but it's people. Because of the pandemic, it certainly made a dent in the workforce of manufacturing companies. And they had to lay people off because they just couldn't sustain their, their own workforce because of the pandemic. So now we're finding that when I'm talking to manufacturers, it's how can you help me get people? And also the silver tsunami we've been hearing over and over again is probably right. something that really affected manufacturers when um, COVID became a thing. They're like, you know what? It's my time to go. Yeah, with the aging workforce, mm -hmm. it's always been um, an issue. So combining that with the pandemic and everything, that it really put challenging times in front of manufacturers. Yeah, so, yeah. the perfect storm, unfortunately. Yeah. But Goodwin University does have pathway programs to help students get into manufacturing. Can you tell us about what makes Goodwin so successful uh, for securing jobs for the graduates before they actually even cross the stage? So we actually have um, a wonderful pathways to careers at Goodwin, starting in the high school. Mm -hmm. It's called um, the Connecticut River Academy. And what we do is we have studies over there that are mandatory in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So certainly those students who take manufacturing that can then matriculate those credits into Goodwin University. So it actually begins a pathway right there um, for graduating high school students. So as workforce, as workforce um, development is everywhere, it certainly begins at a younger age too, right? Mm -hmm. um, even before high school. But in our high school, we recognize that. So we have these students learn about manufacturing in the Connecticut River Academy. Because I'm sure a lot of high school students probably don't have manufacturing on their mind, correct? So it's really important to get them interested a little bit sooner rather than later. Right. So glad you said that. We actually have a mobile lab. Mm -hmm. That's a 44-foot trailer, I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. Um, I said this one time that, I don't know, when I used to go to football games, we used to bring sometimes trailers, right? Maybe not 44 feet. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it's interesting for the kids because what we do is we take that this mobile lab to the middle schools mm -hmm. and high schools, and it gives them a chance to have an opportunity to see what manufacturing is. We give about a 20-minute presentation, and then we show them – like tabletops of mini mills and lays and 3D printers and so they can see for themselves and see even hands-on that what manufacturing looks like. Um, this is called Manufacturing in Motion. We've done many of these throughout the towns and the state of Connecticut. So as I said, that's one of the earlier um, pathways that we're spreading the word about manufacturing. That's so cool because I think when you ask kids, especially when I was little, it was always doctor, nurse, vet, because you know you've seen them, but many kids aren't in a manufacturer. And if they were, it might be a lot different now than when they were originally there. Um, you know, we talked about Horst offline, their new facility where you yeah. picture dark, no windows, everyone on the floor, and it, that's just not what it is anymore. So the mobile lab actually is very bright mm -hmm. inside. And it has that type of feel that you would want to be in a new manufacturing facility. Mm -hmm. To show the kids that it's not your old grandpa's or yeah. my grandpa's dirty, dingy, you know, mm -hmm. dusty kind of place to work. It's actually a wonderful place, a wonderful, and not only is it a job, but it's your career. Mm -hmm. It's And that's what Goodwin strives to be. We strive to have students get careers, not just jobs. And Goodwin University was the only institution in Connecticut awarded the U.S. Closing the Skills Gap grant 
given to train 1,600 people. What was that grant? How was training going? I know when we talked offline, COVID kind of came in the middle of it. So training the numbers, not quite at 1,600 yet, but that means there's more people who can apply. Absolutely. Um, Appreciate the opportunity to talk about this. It is actually a Closing the Skills Gap grant. It is from the federal government, Department of Labor. In around 2019, 2020, before the pandemic hit, we had the support of 11 industry partners and the ACM, um, uh, Aerospace Component Manufacturers Association. And with that, in the support of CCAT and the Connecticut State College System, we received this $2 million to train incumbent workers. And there is a caveat, you only can take a certain course one time, one time only. You have to have a registered or unregistered program. Um, when, the, when the pandemic hit, it was tough because they wanted to see long-term courses without, with measurable outcomes. And what could we do except do things online? But we actually did pretty good, I have to say. You know, and to be one of the only institutions in Connecticut to get this grant was pretty impressive. I thought. So. Do you have your eye on any other grants? Is that something you're always working towards? <laughs> of course we do. <laughs> and, and I think that this is the um, the problem right now. I don't want to say it's a it's almost a good problem to have here in the state of Connecticut, and I'm sure our chief manufacturing officer, Paul Lavoy, has mentioned that. Mm-hmm. There's so many grants coming now for incumbent worker training, and mm-hmm. the thing that I'm finding that I want to make clear is that what our grant is what somebody else's grant is, because these manufacturers are getting confused. Mm -hmm. As much as it's wonderful to have these funding resources, um, Kelly uh, Valeris from the Governor's Workforce Council is doing an amazing job trying to align these resources Mm -hmm. and stakeholders and, and make it easier for manufacturers to understand what's out there. When we were speaking about those mobile labs, you just said that you take them to schools, but do you also take them to companies to help upskill workers? I feel like that's something we spoke about, and that is very important to employees now is to know their company is going to invest in um, their career goals. Absolutely. We actually um, have taken this mobile lab that we take also to the kids, to the manufacturing facilities, and we've We've already trained almost um, about 1,600 to 2,000 employees in the state of Connecticut over the last four years. This mobile lab can go anywhere from Shelton, Connecticut to Hartford, Connecticut. Um, And what it is is that we actually provide workshop trainings. And these workshops could be between four hours and eight hours. And um, it could be, I'm just going to use some manufacturing jargon, (laughs) blueprint reading, Mm -hmm. GD&T, lean principles, you name it. Um, it's a wonderful way for these manufacturers to get their employees to come out for training because, let's face it, sometimes people don't want to go for training, but we make it in a comfortable atmosphere. Like I said before, it's bright, it's clean. It's, we even bring coffees and bagels <laughs> in the morning to make it more um, comfortable for the employees. It saves the manufacturer time and money. You're not sending your employee out mm-hmm. to get training, so you save, um, you save some uh, some, some money there for uh, your own your own company. Yeah. Does Goodwin offer the chance, so say they, you didn't send the mobile lab for the employees to come into a classroom, do you offer that too? Yes, absolutely. You can actually come into their, uh, into, you can come to Goodwin if you'd mm-hmm. like, um, but generally the manufacturers want to go to um, their own facility okay. because the mobile lab can only fit mm-hmm. to a certain amount of people, like up to, with covid um, we were doing 10. Without mm-hmm. COVID, it was 12. Okay. So, but yeah, it's, um, we've had a lot of success and, and we continually, even, even like this week, I think we're doing training in another company. Oh, that's great. Yeah. One of the most interesting things I think you spoke to me about is Goodwin is going to be opening manufacturing training centers in the south end and north end of Hartford, trying to bring that industry training to people who might not otherwise be able to get other places you know why is that so important so important to get into the community to understand what what it's like to, I, I, I used I lived in Hartford you know when I was growing up and I mean I'm not, I don't know if I'm that girl that would actually go into manufacturing but if I had that opportunity wouldn't that be great and what this these centers are going to do is give the familiar 
um, feel of what manufacturing is. We're going to have um, some CE courses. I mean, to get into the community, to have them understand how how good manufacturing can be as a career. And you have that, the opportunity, right? Right in your own neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were, um, our goal is. And hopefully that will come to fruition soon. And the manufacturers, you know, we mentioned in the beginning that you work with over 100. Now, these are all over the state, or are they more localized to the Hartford area? All over the state. And I love asking uh, people this question. You know, what is one of the most interesting things you think is manufactured in Connecticut? There's so many, you know. Mm -hmm. There's like, um, because when we go and and, um, talk to the the kids, there's... um, there's like wiffle balls. Yep. There's mm-hmm. there's there's uh, candy. Pez, right? right? Pez, <laughs> Pez, chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one of the coolest things that I'll be honest that I I saw one time working with a manufacturer was washing machines mm-hmm. for the Navy. Oh yeah, right here in Berlin. They I, did have I to say that right? Small. It's usually Berlin. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have to be a little bit smaller, I'm sure, to fit into a they're, massive... They're big. Oh. They're very, very big. So whoever thought in Connecticut mm-hmm. we would have a company that would manufacture these these washing machines, because the submarines, I guess, are pretty big, mm-hmm. too. So, yeah, that was pretty interesting. And, you know, we've been talking about this um, through different areas, like upscaling and, and putting manufacturing training centers in Hartford, but... How can we help the workforce problem? I feel like that's something that you might have been studying again before uh, it was an even dire issue. It's important, I believe, to start talking when you're younger, you know. And um, like we had, like we talked about at Goodwin, Goodwin likes to go out with the mobile lab to bring the uh, to talk to elementary school kids, to middle school kids, to high school kids. I want the mobile lab to come to um, Newington, where I live, <laughs> to come to uh, the Martin Kellogg, which maybe we can do for my for my son. Because when you get these kids interested into what could actually be a career, mm-hmm. I mean, that's pretty important. I mean, for for everything moving forward, right? For an adult, for the economy, for, for everything. Um, yes, that's what our, our affiliate, Red ECT, the nonprofit, that's right. all their focus is, is building that pipeline and starting young and, and getting the interest there. And Because not everyone is meant to go to a four-year school either. No. And a lot of these programs are willing to pay to train you and, or, or pay you as you're being trained, which is so unique and, and such a great pathway to take. Speaking of unique, what do you think makes Goodwin University unique? You know, this is such a successful program. Um, why? So, so Goodwin is a private institution. Mm-hmm. We uh, we partner certainly with other institutions, the, the community colleges, but we're but we're private, and we really have we are focused on manufacturers. We're focused on helping the students have connections with manufacturers. And these manufacturers can come into Goodwin, and they can talk to these students. We have a thirty-seven credit program that. In the first five and a half weeks, a manufacturer can talk to the students and find somebody they think they have a good rapport with. Mm -hmm. And then they would take that student and then on Friday afternoons or whatnot work there. So essentially it's it's an apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. And this this program is, is 22 and a half weeks, which is six months. So can you imagine walking in, not necessarily having those skills, and then in six months having a job because the student can get an idea what the manufacturing facility facility is like Mm -hmm. the and then the um the manufacturer will have an employee at the end of the six months and we truly just want to focus on the needs of manufacturers the needs of students and how to get them connected and get their career path on the right track and my last question for you, you know, we are in the legislative session. Is there anything that lawmakers can do right now in this session that would make it easier for pathway programs like Goodwins to succeed or, um, you know, just to, to fix the workforce issue? I put the much aware of what's going on in Connecticut. I think um, what Kelly Valeris is doing is, is amazing for the Governor's Workforce Council if they can support that, it's going to be a portal for manufacturers. Mm-hmm. 
And that's going to be hopefully the way that manufacturers will learn all about these resources so we can, as a collaborative group, help help these manufacturers. And these manufacturers also need to invest into what they feel they need, which means working with Goodwin University, working with the community colleges. And that way we're not in certain silos. And their workforce will be not as um, in dire straits as if they are right now. Because I think the, the real challenge is to get out the word about manufacturing, um, believe it or not, even though it's been around for how many, how many years, um, and the positive factors of manufacturing. Well, Melanie, thank you so much for coming on the BizCast. We really enjoyed hearing what you have to say and learning about Goodwin. Hopefully, we'll have you on again to talk about maybe another grant or uh, some other program you guys are launching. But thank you for listening to this week's BizCast. You can listen and subscribe to our BizCast on Apple, YouTube. And for more episodes, you can head on over to CBIA.com.